Okay guys, um, this is my second attempt to do this uh, type of streaming video. Um, and basically what this video is, is going to be some sort of tutorial video on um, track etiquette and like how to track, how to do this track thing, right? This is geared toward beginners and um, so what I'm going to do is go through uh, basically the steps and um, how to do this track thing um, pitting in um, getting uh, getting onto track grid uh, passing etiquette um, inputs steering braking acceleration um, how to take corners and um, apexing and all this stuff uh, so uh, it's geared toward beginners and um, I will afterwards go into a little bit of commentary on the track itself at New York Safety Track um, and some of my observations. Now this is some of my earlier footage of the day and so in addition to this being the first time I was at this track, um, I just want to shout out Got Track LI and uh, which was the group that I am a member of that I went with for this event. and. Um, Really great bunch of really casual uh, private event um, guys, and um, they're really chill. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. So basically, what you need to do is get onto the grid, um, and normally you would park here, um, waiting to be let out onto the track. Now this is uh, this guy over here. Um, this guy over here is the uh, the grid person, and he will be looking at the track, making sure the track is clear, so you can get out there safely. Um, and uh, typically, they don't let anybody on until the previous session. Everybody else is off, right? Um, I was actually the only person in this session, so I believe I was driving alone. Uh, nobody else was out there, and. Um, Everybody was already off the track, so um, this guy's just waving me on, right? So when you get waved on, you have to wait, watch the track uh, grid person, because they're going to make sure that the track is clear for you to get on. But that window is shrinking, right? Um, once they give you the signal, you need to get onto track and get onto pace uh, fairly quickly. Um, don't dawdle or dawdle, right? Because if you do, people who are already on track and at speed are going to come flying up on you. So make sure you at least get up to, uh, you know, six tenths of, of, of track speed. Now, this is the first lap, right? First lap, you don't want to be going too fast. You're not want to be going, don't, don't go like more than six tenths of your uh, capability, right? Reason being is your tires are probably not warmed up. Neither are your brakes. And uh, in most uh, organizations and events, the first lap anyway is a no passing lap. So um, it's a warm up lap. So don't take it too easy though, because if you take it too easy, um, nothing will get warmed up and you'll be wasting, your, you'll be taking a Sunday drive. Don't do that. So uh, typically I'll be driving around the first lap in mostly fourth gear, 70% uh, probably if not more uh, in fourth gear which is very um, it's a high gear for track use typically you're in third gear uh, in fourth gear for a little bit um, so just going around the track right going around the track going around the track and take this opportunity in the warm-up lap to um, really get an eye on the flag stations right so what you want to do is Get an idea of where the flag stations are. Um, there's one that I just passed uh, on the right side, right here. So there's a flag station right there. Um, <clears throat> get an idea of where all the flag stations are, at least the manned ones, right? Because let's face it, there are sometimes a lot of flag stations that aren't even being used at any given point. So get an idea of that. Get an idea of what's on the track. If it's a clear track, um, you know, if, it, if you're in rainy situations, for example, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, 
which parts of the track are clear and on the drier side and which sides are really wet or maybe even have rivers going across them, right? Get an idea of that. Get an idea if there are any uh, like loose rocks in any areas, if there are any uh, slippery spots. Um, get to know the track in that first warm-up lap, right? So, uh, you know, as you um, complete that first lap, right, you're going to get on to um, starting your second lap on the main straight, typically. So now it's time to pick up the pace a little bit, right? Pick up the pace and um, you're going to want to kind of ease into picking up the pace. Don't just go 10 tenths right away. Maybe go 7 or 8 tenths, right? Um, and pick up the pace slowly. You've got plenty of time out there on the track, right? Um, so I'm going to teach you a little bit about uh, cornering. And so you want to start off on the outside lane, right? Outside of the lane, right? And then as you approach the corner, get your braking done. You want to get your braking done early because, uh, especially for novices, because um, you don't want to over uh, ask more of the tires than they're capable of. Um, just to give you an example, tires have a limit on grip, right? So let's say you have 100% of grip available, right? That means your, you know, your tires really aren't working very hard. Um, let's say 95, right? You're just cruising along, 95% of the grip available. Um, when you're braking really, really hard, you're asking like near 100% of the grip, right? Now, if you're asking 100% of the grip and then you ask it also to turn for you, the tire's not gonna be able to comply. So that's why you wanna get all your braking done um, so that when you begin to turn, you have as much of that tire grip available for turning as you as you can right so get your braking done turn in get close get to the inner uh, inner part of the of the uh, of the corner right and then as you get onto the accelerator once you pass the apex the apex is really the uh, the middle point of the turn and that middle point of the turn is where you're on the inside uh, part of the track on that corner, so on this, in this case, I was on the right side of the inner side. Once you pass the middle apex, right, the apex, then you roll off, uh, roll into the accelerator more, right? So you are now going from neutral throttle to accelerating, uh, neutral throttle to accelerating. And then you turn tracking out, so you go toward the outside of the track, and now you're accelerating. So um, this, the next corner is another, it's a, it's a, it's a left-hander. So um, we get to close to the right of the track, right? And then we get our braking done and then we turn to the left, hit the inside corner. Uh, now this is a very long uh, corner. So we're gonna stay on the inside until we get to this set of cones, which is the basically the end of the corner. And then we will uh, input more accelerator and then get to the right side of the track, right? Because now uh, the corner is on the inside, right? And so that's uh, basically the gist of cornering on track for beginners. Get your braking done in a straight line as much as possible. Then uh, roll off the brake onto the accelerator into a neutral throttle, which means neutral throttle is you're on the gas, but you're not on the gas where you're accelerating and you're not lifting. So it's neutral throttle, right? Get into neutral throttle, do all your turning until you hit the apex of the turn. And then as you hit the apex, as you track out and unwind your steering wheel, then you apply more throttle. Now, just a pro tip for you guys, smooth inputs are, are faster than jerky, sudden, cool inputs, right? So I know it's really fun to like, shift real hard and let off the clutch real fast and feel those like jerky motions and when you're braking like getting thrown down and uh and then you know back on the gas throw your head back but honestly it's not fast and you're unsettling the car which ruins your dynamics of your handling so yeah you want to have smooth inputs as possible it might seem boring but honestly most of the time what looks slow is faster on paper and timing so
Uh, let's continue. Um, I want to touch upon uh, passing, and so passing etiquette is as such. Um, typically for beginners, I recommend passing and allowing passing uh, on the straightaways. So, um, you know, in the corners and stuff, advanced people and instructors, you know, they'll do that. But uh, in the novice groups, um, avoid it as much as possible. Um, so what I'll do is I will skip ahead to um, skip ahead to getting close to the end of the track. So let's say you're you've got somebody behind you, right? Let's say you've got somebody behind you and you've noticed them for a couple of turns. Uh, most likely they're faster than you, right? Um, now the trend is high horsepower vehicles love to you know go really fast on the straights, but a lot of times they might not handle as well in the corners. Lighter cars like the Lotus or you know Mazda Miatas, um, they handle really well in the corners, but on the straightaways they lack the power to really, you know, get hauling. Um, in the novice group, you you will probably see this more than the uh, intermediate or advanced groups, but um, typically a slow, high horsepower car may have. Um, may go slower through the corners than the light cars, right? The, uh, the momentum cars, as they call it. And um, they won't let them pass, and they get to the straightaway, and then they just, boom, they zoom ahead, right? Um, and they're like, ha, see, I'm faster than them. But then, you know, like on the first corner, you know, the lighter cars have already come right back on and caught, caught up, up to you because, because, you know, they're, they're breaking, breaking later than you or whatever. Let's, Let's say they're, they're making up times in the corners. corners. What I'm trying to say is if you've seen a person or a car behind you right, for a few turns, you should probably let them pass. They're probably faster than you. So what you want to do is um, at the next available passing zone, which let's restrict it to straightaways only, um, you, keep, you keep driving your line, but you, you, know, you patiently you know, wait to give them the opportunity, right? And um, basically, you are ready to give them the point by we're about to approach the straightaway, right? And then what I would do is right after your as you're as you're tracking out and unwinding the wheel, you stick your hand out the window and give the passing signal. Now, you you might ask, what is a passing signal? Well, I'll explain. It. The passing signal is, um, it depends on, uh, there's two one, there's two passing signals. If you want them to pass on the right side, uh, right of you, then you give them a point by over the top of the car, right, out the window, over the top in a big grand motion, right, over the top in like a grand motion, over the top of your roof, and you point them that way, right? Um, and uh, so you want to point them to the right of your car, and um, so I don't know if this is mirrored or not, but uh, yeah, basically um, you want to point them over to the right side. Uh, so I guess like that. If I, I, I can't tell if the uh, PIP, the video that um, you're looking at me in front of my microphone um, is pointing to the right or left. So uh, if... Um, Regardless, you're pointing to the, the right side corner, right? If you're pointing over in the driver's side, right? Over, over your head. And then if you are allowing them to pass on the left side, then you just stick your hand out the window and give them a straight, you know, straight finger out and point it that way, right? Um, don't give them a little poke and don't give them a little bit of this, right? Um, really full arm motion, right? full arm motion. So when you give which point by? Uh, the answer is it depends on which uh, the next corner, which direction the next corner is going. So I'm going onto the main street and the next corner is going to the left. So that means I am pointing out my window, straight out my window to the left, right? Uh, the driver's side. So, um, once you give a point by, you stay on your line, which on the front straight means I'm sticking to the right side, 
but you lift off the gas. Oh, is that a bird? Yeah, I guess that's a bird. Um, so you lift off the gas a little bit, and uh, what you have to do is give them safe passage, right? When you're pointing somebody by, it does not mean that you're going to be like, hey, 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 try to pass me, sucker, right? You're actually supposed to be give them uh, safe passage to pass you. They will come offline, pass you, get in front of you, get back online, and then continue driving, right? Um, if you have a high horsepower car, please lift for the lower horsepower cars. It's really hard for them to pass you. So uh, just let them pass you, sacrifice a few seconds off your lap time, and let them get ahead of you. And uh, it, if they're faster than you, you'll, you'll probably not see them again, you know, anyway. So uh, just get back on with it. Now, if you are behind, right? So let's, uh, let's go back. Uh, let's say you've been chasing this guy through these corners or somebody in front of you and um, they it, Usually you want to anticipate that they're going to give you a point by right so Imagine okay. This guy's probably gonna give me a point by on the straight, right? So let's say he gives you a point by now, right? You have to get offline. So you actually have to drive you have to drive off the line right around him on the side that he gives you the point by, right? And if he gives you the point by on the right by accident, right? And he's on the right side, well, you're not gonna pass him on the right side. But there are some times like where there are very short or confusing areas where he's not sure, um, you know, which side he's supposed to point you by. Whatever side he points you by, if he gives you that room, go that direction. Um, but, even more importantly, if you don't feel like that's right, or if you don't feel comfortable passing at that time, what you do is you give them a wave off, right? So you just go like this, right? Wave them off, right? And uh, kind of lift off the accelerator a little bit, right? This will give them the signal that you don't want the point by. You're not accepting the point by, right? Because they're volunteering to let you pass. Doesn't mean you have to pass them, right? Um, you are the one choosing to pass. So uh, at that point, what you want to do is if you don't feel comfortable, wait for the next opportunity. Hopefully they're not like, okay, well, if this guy's not going to pass me, I'm never going to give him another point by. Uh, typically, you know, they'll give you another pass by at a more opportune time, like a straightaway. And then you can pass them, right? Don't fall back too much and stay, stay back because then they might think, oh, this guy's not fast. He's not fast enough to catch me. Um, so just get back on him and try to anticipate another point by at, uh, at an opportune time like a straightaway. So um, that basically does it for etiquette, right? Don't pass unless you get a point by. Uh, you can get kicked out. Um, I'll go over flags really, really quick. Just the basic flags that you'll need to know. Um, green flag means go. Green is go. Um, everything, you know, passing is, is okay. A standing yellow flag, which means they're just holding it, you know, the, it's just hanging there. Um, uh, yellow flag means no passing, okay? Uh, but uh, you guys can continue to drive pretty much, you know, you know, seven, eight out of ten pace. Um, but it's just a yellow cautionary. Um, a waving yellow, a waving yellow means there's something up ahead, kind of slow down. Um, be careful, there's probably something right up in front of you. Um, so just, just be careful. Uh, a standing red flag means, uh, or a waving red flag, uh, means that there's something right up ahead of you. A waving flag is urgent. Really carefully slow down and come to a complete stop as soon as you can, but watch what's ahead of you. It usually means there's something bad that happened right in front of you. Standing red means, uh, you need to come to a complete stop, but a controlled stop. Doesn't mean slam on your brakes and like throw your car over, right? It means come to a controlled stop, uh, swift, quickly, quickly come to a controlled stop and get off the track, right? Um, some tracks and some flaggers will want you to stay on the track, but you know, offline or on the line, whatever, uh, off the track or, or slightly on the edge, Get that clarification in your driver's meeting or during the flag uh, flagging safety briefing right black flag 
This means everybody needs to get off the track. So finish your lap, right? But pit out, right? That doesn't mean go for a joy ride and go for more laps. Um, pit out. Uh, if they wave the flag, the black flag, and then they point it at you, they point the flag at you, right? That means that you specifically need to come in um, and they just need to make sure you're okay. Um, you know, whether you got some, uh, whether you got some wheels off the track, uh, you know, onto the grass, or uh, you've spun or something, or they, basically they just want to talk to you and make sure everything's okay. Um, there's a variation of the black flag called the meatball, and that's a black flag with a red circle in the middle, or orange circle. Um, that it looks like a meatball, kind of. And typically what they'll do is they will show that and then point to you, uh, which really means that there's a mechanical failure on your car. So um, be careful, pit in, um, and uh, sometimes you may have to stay offline if you're leaking fluids, if you notice, right? Because you don't want to be spilling fluids and slippery stuff on the track. So uh, yeah, you need to pit in, uh, you know, or pit out. You need to pit out. Um, yeah, I guess you need a pit. Um, those are the main flags. The only other flag I can think of that's kind of common is the blue flag, sometimes with a yellow stripe in the middle. Uh, what that means is check your mirrors. There's probably somebody faster than you behind you, and you're not letting them by. So uh, check your mirrors. Give them a point by when you are able to. Doesn't mean give them a point by right away, uh, but it just means... Hey, give them a point by on your next opportunity. All right, so that's a basic overview of the flags. Um, I don't have examples in this video. I want to make a separate video on uh, flags in its entirety, so go check that out when that comes out. Uh, but uh, let's just end this video real quick uh, for the beginners with um, pitting out, right? So usually... Uh, what they'll do is they will give the checker flag, right? They'll wave the checker flag. Um, and once you see the checker flag at the flag station, that means this is your last lap. And if you've already, if you're already passed or like you see the checker flag, like really, like, you know, after you've already passed the, the pit, um, pitting out, um, um, you know, lane, right? Then take the last take your final lap as a cool down lap um, but uh, if you do see it it means pit out you know just it, it means pit out your session is over right so take the rest of your time to cool down usually drive around at like five tenths six tenths in like a higher gear fourth gear fifth gear or whatever probably fourth um, and just slow down uh, stay online uh, as much as possible but you know your pace is slow and um, when you get toward the uh, end of the end of the track, right? As you can tell, I'm kind of just bumbling along at this point. Um, and once you get toward the last section of the corners, right around here is when you want to start and stick your hand out in a fist out the window and uh, start staying to the right of the track, right? Stay to the right of the track and um, you know, I'm, I'm not even doing the, the corners, right? And slow down, stay to the right of the track with your fist out the whole time. Keep your fist out, stay to the right of the track, slow down, and uh, until you get to, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going, get off the track, you know, you can shift to a lower gear, and you can bring your fist back in once you pass the barrier, okay? So I pass the barrier, now I put my fist back in, and now I'm just, now I'm out, right? Now, if you're, uh, if you pit it out, right, before the session is over, you can actually line up back into the grid, right? Um, let's say, um, you know, you just wanted to take a short break or during your session, like in the middle of your session, you want to take a quick break, take a breather, maybe you have to use the bathroom or something, um, but uh, if you need to use the bathroom or something, then you usually pit out on the, on the get out, line up on the grid on the side. Um, otherwise, um, if you just need a short break and you're just waiting, um, you line up back to the normal part of the grid. 
and usually the uh, the, the grid person, the track person, um, will kind of like come over. And if you just want a quick break, or if you're trying to avoid a train, which is a bunch of cars just going slow all together, uh, and it's not being fun, and just say just waiting for the train to pass, um, and then they will they will let the they will give you some time, uh, give the give the give that train some time to pass by, and then they will let you back on um, on the grid. So um, yeah, so that kind of goes and explains that part. Um, just remember when you're driving around in the uh, in the paddock area, um, go really slow. Typical speed limits are around five miles per hour. Some of them are unidirectional, um, so like around the paddock, if the, if it's a big circle around the paddock, it's usually one direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the track. Now, New York Safety Track, um, we were lined up on kind of just on the right side here, so. Um, there wasn't any particular direction um, restrictions, um, but uh, yeah, just be really careful, drive really slow, just people walking, um, cars backing in and out, sometimes poor visibility, you understand. Uh, people with helmets on, they can't even turn around their heads all the way. So be real careful. And um, yeah, so what I want to do next is uh, wrap up the video by um, going uh, let's go to a later lap and um, okay so I want to just uh, go over a few of the um, just interesting parts that I noticed while driving the Lotus so this is more Lotus specific um, tips and tricks and commentary and just notes that I want to kind of explain so the braking zone on the front straight starts here at the 400 mark, 300 mark. When I'm starting out, I'm testing my brakes starting to brake at the 300 mark. But uh, as you get a little more confident, as you get good tire grip and heat into your tires and brakes, um, I'll start actually braking closer to 250 or 200 mark, right? Uh, depends how ballsy you're getting. Um, for beginners, start 3, 350, right? Um, and then um, heel toe downshift to hug the inside corner for for momentum cars cars that have a lot of grip um, just stick real close on the inside here um, higher horsepower cars heavier cars will track out here at this point they'll go kind of go out a little bit maybe not even all the way but somewhat and then they'll come wrap around but for the tighter handling cars um, yeah, stick on the inside of the first couple turns. Um, and then over here, in this video, I'm actually cutting into early, but what I like to do now is kind of hang out over here until I get around here, and then uh, once I get around a little bit back there, then I'll start cutting in to make this um, a late apex, which means I'm starting to turn in this pretty late. Because uh, if you turn it too early, you actually run out of track over here, and you have to like not fully accelerate coming out of here. Um, then over here, you gotta get kind of ballsy because uh, it dips down real quick here, right? So you start going downhill, and uh, it's kind of off camber, so um, it feels like you're gonna like fly off the track. So you want to get some braking done real quick here. And then uh, get to the left and again hug the interior here and right around here you get a good like good compression um, and uh, basically that compression will help you just really stick um, uh, really stick in that corner so um, once you get past that this is a very, very tricky part in the track where you need to be straight because you're going to get light or maybe even get some air depending depending on the car, right? So anytime you're getting very light over like a bump, right, you want to keep your front tires, um, your front tires straight because, um, you know, if they're, if they're tilted or, or, or turned when you're, um, when you're going over that bump, you might, you know, spin out or something. All right, so um, once you get past that part, you get from the left, 
And uh, actually right there, so let's skip over that part. Um, so we're here. Once you get to the right side, over here, for beginners, I would break a little bit to get started on this left turn, but, um, but what you really want to do for the more advanced drivers is to just lift and then go in, or to just balls out, you know, just make that flat out. Um, now over here, it felt a little weird and wiggly for me, um, like right around there. Um, yeah, like, I don't know if you kind of saw that little bit of wiggle, but uh, it kind of unsettled my car. Um, I don't know if heavier cars would have a better time or whatever, but uh, maybe more downforce, but um, it unsettled me, and then I had to really brake and correct before this turn, uh, before turn 10, and then stick on the out, outside here a little bit more than I did, about half to two thirds, and uh, just accelerate because you want to be a little more straight approaching this curve. Get a lot of braking done, and then throw yourself to the right down into turn 12. And then through turn 12, um, brake really good. You can kind of see some marks here uh, right in this video, but uh, yeah, um, you gotta turn before 13, and kind of do a late apex for 13, because then you'll hit this with almost a straight shot through this part. Uh, and then get braking done really good here before 15 and then use all the track to track out here and then um, once you get here you kind of just stay to the right um, and then get to 17 once you get to 17 there's a lot of good compression here again so you can go full throttle and really chuck your car uh, turning left into this corner um, and then let's see if uh, Let's go to the next video. Um, so then once you get to, uh, once you get past that part, you stay on the right, right? You stay on the right, and then around this cone, you start braking hard. Uh, brake hard before that. Um, so let's go back. Start braking hard around here, and then you turn in to tr uh, the final turn, 18, and then you track out, and then you're done. So full, uh, full lap. Um, yeah, I had a hard time at this track, very technical, and um, uh, it was my first time. I didn't get much instruction. Uh, I don't think I had an instructor in the car at all, so um, I ended up just asking some of the more experienced drivers uh, to kind of talk me through um, some of their, um, yeah, some of their methods. But uh, I hope that was helpful to you guys. Um, Shout out to Got Track Li and uh, Kyler over there. Um, great group of guys, really chill, really casual, um, and they put on a really uh, good value event for a ton of track time. Um, I highly recommend if you are a track nut to get some time uh, with that organization. Um, they're growing, and so a uh, shout out to them. And uh, shout out to uh, my bud VJ who um, I kind of made this series of, of track tips and beginner tips uh, to really help him out um, as he gets started. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked and enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm really uh, trying to grow to meet that um, new threshold for the YouTube Partner Program um, after being kicked out, unfortunately. Uh, you know. Not going to bore you with the details there, but uh, yeah, comment below if you found it helpful uh, and support it. Uh, support comments are always, uh, you know, always nice to hear. If there's anything else you would want to add, please add them below as well. And hope to see you guys next time. Peace.